Yeah, I really like Osmond. I've made my way to a local greenhouse where I'm meeting up with Chris Bell, who specializes in house plants and tropical plants. All right, Chris, so when I am designing a garden in the landscape, so many factors go under consideration, and light is number one, right? Sunlight, you want to figure out where your house is oriented, the shade patterns of nearby structures and trees. Same as inside, right? Exact same thing as inside. You just have a slightly different uh, set of variables. With uh, houseplants, you're going to be looking at what window is mm -hmm. in that room. Okay. So for low light house plants, you're going to be talking about a north facing window or a plant that you're going to have oriented in your home that's pulled back from a certain window. Mm -hmm. If you're talking about a in between kind of a middle of the road light exposure plant, you're going to talk about something that's in an east facing window or maybe in a room with a window but slightly pulled back. And then when you're talking about highlight plants, you're going to be talking about something that's directly in a west or a south facing window. Right, that the sun is just cooking in there. Yeah. What I would love to share with people is what to think about before you come into the garden center to buy your house plant. Know your space, yeah. know your light, and, right? And, and know your plants. Right. Um, so here we have some examples of some low light, some intermediate light, and some highlight plants mm -hmm. to kind of simplify that for people. All right, so, well, so like with shade, I know outside you, for annuals you'll do impatience or maybe ferns and hostas. What do you recommend for in for the shade inside. So indoors we have right here we have this bamboo palm that's a wonderful low light floor plant. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a real industrious plant. People can allow it to dry out in between waterings and it does a really good job of filling a space completely and having that nice tropical look in your home. I can see it anchoring in the corner. It really does. Filling it, up the space. It can kind of pull the whole room together. Mm -hmm. um, and then for a hanging plant we have this pothos right here which has this really cool variegated leaf pattern mm -hmm. and they, they're beautiful plants. They have this cascading or vining growth habit. It's beautiful and, and sometimes in low light situations when you have a variegated plant it captures the light a little more. It really, it's a nice focal point. It really does, especially those early morning rays that are just kind of like piercing through. Sitting there through. having your coffee, you're like, oh, thank Oh, it's, it's the best. Awesome. And for a table plant we have this Chinese evergreen right here, an aglaonema, mm -hmm. which are really cool plants. They come in all these funky patterns and interesting colors like this pink one right here. Um, and they're really easy plants to grow. As long as you keep up with the watering, you can put them on a coffee table, on a mantle place, something like that. Moving to partial shade, what do you recommend for inside? So um, for a floor plant, we have this Dracaena, mm -hmm. which does really well in those kind of intermediate light situations. Um, it's a plant that just like the bamboo palm can put up with drying out slightly in between waterings mm -hmm. and it's just another really nice focal point for a room. I love the vertical element and again filling up the corner, anchoring exactly. does, the room. Does really well. For a hanging plant we have this Swiss cheese uh, plant or a Swiss cheese vine here or Monstera andensii which That's is beautiful. so cool. Look mm -hmm. at the texture and the, the big holes in the leaves. I've it, had people ask like, oh, something's eating my leaves. And it's like, no, this is the growth no, that, of this that, plant. No, that's the growth habit. And, you know, a lot of the Monstera family plants have striations where this one has holes in the leaf. It's like the striations didn't completely disconnect as it was growing. They're really cool. And for a tabletop plant, we have this bird's nest fern that has this interesting spiral growth habit. Um, That's one, pretty cool. Yeah, I love that is, structure. It is really cool. The one thing to think about when selecting a fern is that you're going to want to water it a little bit more often than your average house plant. That one you're never going to want to completely let dry out. And um, then for full sun outside, you know, I think coneflowers, black eyed Susan, Nepeta, you know, as an interior plant, what are our options? So we'll talk about the floor plant again first. And, Right here we have a croton or a croton petra and they have these really funky cool tie-dyed looking leaves and it's a fantastic plant for a sunny window mm -hmm. or you know if you've got a sunroom or something like that they do really well in there. And then for a tabletop plant we have this snake plant or sansevieria mm -hmm. and if you are considering a house plant but you're not really a plant person, this may be the perfect first house plant for you. I think I would have to agree. They're kind of indestructible, right? They, you they can put really, it in a corner for a long time and it's yeah, still alive. I jokingly refer to them as the rent plant because it 
if you paid your rent and watered your plant at the same time every month, that would be yeah, more. Like, that's a great tip yeah, right would, there. It would be more than enough for a snake plant. Now we have the, um, the hanging highlight plant. This is a string of pearls or a senecio. Mm -hmm. And they do really well in a south or a west facing window and they have this really cool leaf anatomy that we were talking about before. Yeah, they're in the shape of a ball. They store their water inside, right? Yeah, it's, so. it's a succulent, just like a sedum or a hens and chicks or a sempervivium that you would use outside in the landscape. Right, so therefore they don't need as much water, but they do need direct sunlight. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's really more important is the light exposure for these guys. They, if, if they're kept in a low light environment, they're really not gonna thrive, but in a high light environment, they're very easy to grow. These are all fantastic tips to, to have successful houseplants, right? Know your space, know that you could have them on different levels, floor, tabletop, hanging, just think of how you want it arranged. Yeah, and, and really keep in mind the lighting conditions like what we're talking about today, mm -hmm. and that will greatly increase your chances of being successful when growing your houseplants. Excellent, thanks a lot, Chris, thanks, great Jeff. tips. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button to make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.